Hi everybody, uh, this is lecture 4.1, International Criminal Justice. Uh, this time we are talking about some very uh, large-scale, macro-level issues. So, we are going to be talking about a thing called the ICC, the International Criminal Court. We're going to be talking about what the International Criminal Court does, and uh, some problems that occur uh, with the ICC. Uh, before we really get into it, just like everything else, we need to talk about some basic definitions. Um, when you're looking at the macro level, macro any macro level phenomena, you're looking at nations and you're looking at states, and it's important to remember those are two different things and what exactly those mean on the international level. Uh, for those of us living in the United States, we sometimes think of states as being something a little bit different than what they are on the international level. Uh, so first off, a nation is a group of people who hold a common cultural identity. Okay. And a state is the territory of a given government. Um, now, in the modern era, it's important to note that most nations control their state uh, but this isn't always the case. So, uh, within these contexts, examples of states would include Canada, uh, Great Britain, the United States as one state, one national entity, uh, Germany, uh, China. These are examples of states. But, uh, not always, like I said. Uh, the Palestinian uh, people in uh, the Middle East do not have a state that is officially recognized uh, universally around the world. Uh, most Native American tribes do not have uh, territories that are typically recognized outside of uh, the United States federal government, right? So these are examples of nations without states. Uh, the Laplanders, in Scandinavia, uh, the Roma in Europe. There are many, many nations that do not have states, but typically most nations have states. The German nation is in the German state, the French nation is in the French state, etc., etc. Now, the International Criminal Court is a court um, like you would find in a courthouse that oversees. Um, nations, right? And it, it oversees uh, international actors and it tries to keep uh, crimes from occurring on the international level. It is based in the Netherlands uh, and it is often referred to as, quote, The Hague. Uh, so if someone called, said, said something like, well, uh, the President of the United States is being brought up for war crimes in The Hague. Uh, what they mean by when they say The Hague is uh, International Criminal Court. Uh, the Hague is actually the name of uh, the city that the ICC uh, resides in. Um, now, as I mentioned, the ICC was created to pursue uh, perpetrators of crimes against humanity. Uh, the basics of the ICC were created after World War II, after the Nazi genocide. Uh, the Nuremberg trials uh, laid the groundwork for what would become the ICC. Um, these, uh, there are other crimes against humanity included in that. So, um, rape, slavery, enforced prostitution, forcible population transfer. So we're talking about macro level phenomena on the really, really big scale. Uh, crimes that are um, perpetrated by generals and national leaders and then those people tell people under them to do these terrible things and that leads to its own complications we'll talk about in a second there are other war crimes including torture uh, will willful killing so uh, after somebody has surrendered and then killing them anyway biological experiments on human subjects uh, taking hostages, usually that's an in mass kind of thing, uh, unlawful confinement, uh, those sorts of things. Those are usually often what classifies war crimes. 
And then we also have crimes of aggression. So annexation, uh, when one country takes over uh, the territory of another country uh, and that is not uh, uh, a willing thing. It's not a consensual arrangement. Uh, military occupation, uh, bombardment, uh, especially of civilian structures, uh, using blockades in an unlawful matter, or using mercenaries toward any of those ends, uh, especially when the country itself isn't at war, but a country hires a bunch of mercenaries to go do something illegal, uh, that is the kind of thing the ICC would be interested in. There are currently 124 states, uh, countries, if you will, that have signed uh, the Rome Statute. Uh, they, those 124 states are expected to abide by the rulings of the court. Um, it is important to note that, you know, that the United States has been a signatory uh, of uh, the Roman the Rome statute in the past but it is not currently uh, this is uh, not a new development this has uh, been I if I remember correctly at least a decade we haven't been so this doesn't have anything to do with uh, the current presidential administration uh, we haven't been in the ICC for a while uh, and that is pro that doesn't help the United States's reputation because uh, being a member of the ICC says something as far as, you know, what your country will stand for, what it won't stand for. Well, uh, what exactly does the ICC do? So how do they do that, right? How do they make genocide not happen? How do they prevent that from happening? Well, they hold the nations and the leaders accountable. Uh, at a bare minimum, they call out, they say, hey, Australia, you shouldn't be doing that thing. We're going to tell the world that you're doing that thing, and we might try to have trials uh, against your um, leadership. And they then try to provide assistance. So if it's something like uh, there is a drought and the nation, uh, maybe not accidentally, maybe accidentally, uh, didn't get water to this given population and that does classify as some kind of war crime but the nation needs help trying to fix it then the ICC nations will go in and try to help uh, and they also attempt to uh, set up reparations for victims so if genocide is committed by a uh, signatory of the ICC then the ICC will try to get money or some sort of uh, fix for the people that have been um, uh, punished in some way. And with any social institution there are problems that go with it. So one major part in that difficulty of the ICC is that it is not part of the United Nations. They are not connected. Um, most international um, actions that uh, you see around the world uh, are in one way or another connected to uh, the United Nations. So when you talk about the World Trade Organization, that's part of the United Nations. When you talk about the World Bank, that's part of the United Nations. Uh, most uh, peacekeeping forces that are coalitions of uh, countries go through the United Nations in one way or another. And the way Another major factor to that is that the United Nations has a military division called the Blue Helmets that's pictured there. Uh, the Blue Helmets uh, serve as not necessarily heavily armed soldiers. Sometimes they have pistols, uh, sometimes they have basic rifles, but they're not intended to be there to really do traditional military operations. They're more to act as outside observer, sometimes police type people, right? So they're there to maintain peace. Uh, sometimes that would involve having light weaponry, but UN Blue Helmet soldiers don't ever do um, uh, like military assaults or attacks on fortresses or anything like that. Uh, they help enact 
and enforce uh, the law. Though. And that really is helpful for United Nations actions. But like I said, ICC doesn't have that. So uh, when people are called up on war crimes in front of The Hague, uh, they basically have to come on their own volition, right? Um, and criminals don't always do that. Uh, so that is a problem, part of the problems of making ICC work. Uh, state sovereignty is another issue that uh, we have to deal with with uh, the International Criminal Court. Uh, in short, states like to control themselves, right? And the concept of sovereignty is that uh, states or nations um, like to be able to have their own laws and their own rules and maybe make up rules as to when killing is good or bad as opposed to having the international community tell them when they can do these things. And whenever a country uh, is dealing with another country, uh, whenever a country is dealing on the international level, um, issues come up of what happens when uh, people from other societies try to have a say in your country. Does that mean we're being taken over? Uh, there are a lot of people in the United States that don't like the United Nations. They think the United Nations is trying to tell America what to do. Well, uh, is there any validity to those arguments? You could have some very interesting conversations in that regard. Um, another major issue with the ICC uh, or again international criminal justice at all is uh, trying to figure out what exactly it means uh, for a state to be a perpetrator. Uh, here we have a picture of uh, war criminals from Nazi Germany. Uh, there are those um, monstrous gentlemen in the middle row there. There are one, two, three, four, five of them. Uh, I, I see Hermann Hess and Goering, uh, two of the more atrocious um, Nazi war criminals sitting there. And they were ultimately found guilty of war crimes. But Nazi Germany as an entity did horrendous things too. Uh, how do you punish a state or how do you punish people after that state stopped existing, right? So at the end of World War II, Nazi Germany uh, stopped existing. Uh, they became East and West Germany for several decades. And Hitler was dead. So who did they punish? Uh, for the things that happened during Nazi Germany. Uh, do you punish uh, the generals? Well, the general can say that they were just listening to what Hitler said. Do you punish the soldiers who were told to shoot people uh, in front of their children? Well, those soldiers were listening to orders, and uh, under the code of conduct in Nazi Germany, they could just as easily get ha be killed themselves. So... Um, when talking about war crimes and crimes that occur during war, um, the I was just following orders um, argument often comes up. And these were the arguments uh, that um, that line of monsters were trying to make. Uh, another Other issues are states are typically the ones that are trying to enforce laws, right? So within a nation itself, uh, the United States government is trying to enforce our laws. What does it mean when, say, Mexico or Canada or Great Britain is trying to make the United States adhere to laws? What, what exactly are the ramifications of that? Do we even have to listen to them, right? These are philosophical arguments. How does it change when uh, states themselves are the subject to laws. How do you punish a state, right? That is an interesting question. You can't put a state in prison. You can't uh, execute a state as such. Uh, you, you make them pay fines. What if they don't pay the fines, etc.? What happens when a signatory violates a treaty, right? Uh, hypothetically, when someone signs on to be part of the ICC, they agree they're not going to break any of these rules, 
um, and then what happens when they break the rules or what happens when a non-signatory violates the treaty in a horrible way so uh, if say for example uh, the Canadian government uh, decides that it isn't going to that's going to put children ages 5 to 10 uh, to work and it's going to um, make them build weapons that don't aren't legal internationally right like biological weapons or something something really horrendous right and, and then maybe I'm really making up a weird hypothetical here and then maybe Canada is brought up on war crimes well if they're not a signatory then who can make them right that is an issue with these kinds of organizations um, so that is really the the crux and the content of what exactly the ICC is and what exactly the ICC does um, and this will be important information for you not only in the quiz but also uh, going into your uh, work for this week so if you have any questions on this material as always uh, let me know and I will talk to you soon bye